Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Before we begin, I would like to express my sincerest gratitude to 606 subscribers. Thank you so very much for the support. Please consider commenting, subscribing, and potentially even whitelisting the channel so that you could continue to help me grow. Thank you again. I am so grateful to all of you. Today's video is going to be centered a little bit around the administration of Active Directory. The last video that we had was based around setting up an environment and how to make things work together, but we haven't really spoken about what goes on behind the scenes. How is a user created? How is a user managed? How is a user segmented or isolated from another? How is a user grouped? What are computers? So on and so forth. There, there's just a million questions that could be arising in your mind when you're looking at Active Directory administration. Please allow me to simplify the subject for you, if I can. What you're looking at is the virtualized um, Active Directory instance of the my.office Active Domain Controller. And currently, we only have two users, Bob and Linda. With the installation of Active Directory, you have a little utility that's called Active Directory Users and Computers. And this is what we're going to be primarily using when it comes to administering users and computers, hence the name users and computers. Our domain is, is one of the few uh, options in listing. And when we select it, we are given a couple of folders called built-in computers, domain controller, foreign security principles, managed service accounts, and users. Before we continue down the line, there's a couple of things that you need to familiarize yourselves in with. Number one is an OU or an organizational unit. The best way to understand this is basically it is a folder that you place all of your objects in. And by objects, I mean groups, users, and computers. The next thing that you want to familiarize yourself with is groups. A group is a collection of users that is used to, mm, how can I say the word, um, classify by making them belong into a common area. The default group is um, domain users by, def uh, by default when you're installing a brand new uh, Active Directory uh, user um, server sorry uh, the next step that you want to familiarize yourself with is the active directory user this is the um, networking account that you or your employee or your client is going to use to log in to an active directory join machine onto the network and last but not least the computer object is literally just a definition of the computer that's on the network. Let's get started. First and foremost, what we're going to do is, sorry, how we're going to do it is we are going to expand our Active Directory tree down to our root directory. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to try and create a new OU. How is that done? very simple first we're going to again highlight our domain in my case it's my.office and then we're just going to right click on it and we're going to scroll down to new and we're going to select organizational unit now how are we going to call this organizational unit give it a characteristic Maybe a department, maybe a profession, maybe, I don't know, second floor, you know, whatever floats your boat, really, it's, it's entirely 
up to you as the domain administrator that's going to decide how you're going to call your organizational unit. In our case, for example, we're going to call it marketing or marketing OU because we're also going to have users and we're also going to have a marketing group. But again, the best way for you to understand an organizational unit is it's just a folder inside of the Active Directory structure. That is all. Go ahead and click on OK. And you now have a new OU. Let's go ahead and now create a group inside of the OU. And the group is what we're going to be assigning our users to so that we could differentiate them from other users. So right click on Marketing OU, scroll down to New, and go ahead and select Group. Now, what are we going to call the group? Again, it's entirely up to you because your domain is your domain. You are the administrator. You decide what happens and how it happens. Now, because I want to keep it simple, I want to say, hmm, let's see, marketing dash G or marketing group. Fairly simple, right? Now, <clears throat> you're probably wondering what does a group type mean? For the purpose of this video, it's a little out of scope, but I will go and give you a quick summary as best as I can muster it. A security group is basically you representing a user. So, um billy bob is belonging to the group of marketers and that's pretty much it now if you were to select a distribution group then you are kind of going into the aspect where it's more um from the name of a group where you are becoming a collection such as um, if you guys are aware of what's called, or maybe you aren't aware, but what's called a group notification from Outlook, that's basically what a distribution group is. It's, it's um, kind of like a one up in the hierarchy of groups and users where it's only used, well, I don't say want to say it's only used in 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 practice, but companies and businesses use distribution group as a way to distribute notification, news, emails, so on and so forth. For the purpose of what we want to do, go ahead and make sure that a security type is selected before you continue. The next thing that you're probably looking at is the group scope. What is the group scope? The group scope is basically how far the group can reach. What is the scope of overlooking, if that's one way to describe it. Universal basically means, um, and this is something that your guys are probably going to see in a more advanced Active Directory domain course is whenever you have multiple domains uh, in the same forest or trusting domain, um, Universal basically gives it access so that this group can be part of all of those domains. Global is a little bit more restricted. As long as the domain is the, in the same forest or trusting domain, so more or less the same permission grants as universal. And the big difference is when it comes to domain local. Domain local basically just restricts it to the domain that you are creating the group in. So for example, if I go ahead and select domain local and I create the group under my.office, 
domain local is only going to have access to my dot office. It's not going to have access to any additional domain in in our forest or any additional domain that has been um, deemed trusting in domains and trusts. For the purpose of this video, because we are not really going to be adding on uh, additional domains in our forest or we're not going to be seeing as trusting domains, domain, global, and universal all have the same weight. So just go ahead and give it a universal group scope. And voila, now you have a security group. In the future, if you want to use um, groups as an additional way to limit your users, what you can do is you can create a group for each type of scope and each time of of each type of scope and each type of type. I know it seems confusing, but let me explain. In a larger Active Directory group or an environment where you have multiple domains and multiple trusts, as I mentioned previously, different group types, or sorry, not group types, but different groups, um, scopes have different reach and different permissions inside of the domain. So because we have already created a global group, or sorry, I should actually go back and delete it so that I can uh, properly um, give it a proper practice level. So because we're dealing with marketing, and depending on the type of restriction we want to give it, using groups is actually a very efficient way to, for us to limit our users and how we want them to behave on the network. So let, let's create a marketing dash U or universal security group. We're going to create one more for market, whoops, marketing.g for a global security group. And finally, we are going to add one more group for um, marketing.dl or domain local, meaning that this group will only have access to the my.office domain. Go ahead and click OK. As I mentioned, the utility of <clears throat> Pardon. The, the utility of different types of group can probably be expanded upon in deeper courses where you go and you actually start and learn about the inside and out of proper Active Directory administration. Um, but what I personally do at work is, for example, whenever I create three groups such as this, depending on the network resource, resource that I have is depending on what group is going to go in. Like for example, if you guys have a printer that you want to limit only to the marketing department, you're going to only create a DL or domain local group to ensure that nobody from another domain is going to come and use the, <clears throat> say, printer, for example. Um, in, in, in that department. And by using domain local groups, you can really go into the nitty gritty of managing how outside devices interact with it. And uh, again, it's really outside of the scope of this video, but it, it's really amazing the type of control that you can achieve over a network and its resources if you properly segregate it to the point where the tools for a certain department stay the tools for a certain department. Another way to restrict groups and users is by nesting. What does that mean? Nesting means when you put one item inside of another item 
to give it a bit of a hierarchical um, scroll down. Here's what I mean by this. For example, universal and global, for the, ter for the purpose of this video alone, they have the same um, privileges on the network, right? But say we want to limit a little bit on how the global group has access and resources. So what we're going to do is we're going to make it as a member of you. And here's how we're going to do that. So right click on the group that you want it to be your primary group or your master group or those who are a little bit more of the um, um, with with uh, legacy names because master and slave used to be in computer terminology primary secondary is is like a 21st century thing whatever i'm not really going to express opinion about it it is what it is and it's just so now there's two ways of adding a group to a nest one way is you can add the destination group as a member or you can make the secondary group as a member of the primary here's what i mean double click marketing dash you and you have a couple of tabs general members member of and managed by under members is where you're going to add the secondary group add and then we are going to click marketing dash d check name okay and now we're adding marketing dash g as a nest to marketing dot you uh dash you sorry now the other way to do it is click on the destination group so in our case marketing dash g and select the member of tab click on add and add marketing dash u check name and when you have the urn aligning it means that it's verified and then click on ok now we have achieved the same thing with by performing it in two different methods go ahead and click on ok if you want to verify go on marketing dash u and verify members you are going to see that marketing dash g is a member of marketing dash u now that we have finished with groups we can start moving on to computers or sorry not computers users now <clears throat> in some scenarios um some professionals would recommend oh you need to create a template in my personal opinion a template is not really needed because the steps to create a user aren't that many to begin with and even when you have maybe 10 20 50 um whatever nested groups it doesn't really matter just take an arbitrary number right you would only make a member of that one group you're not going to be adding a member to 50 groups or 10 groups or even five groups for that matter unless they absolutely have to and even if you do find yourself in that situation you would be creating a template for those complicated scenarios not for something simple so because we have already started with the um bob's burger um naming convention let's go ahead and add a couple of more users to our kingdom let me just pull up the bob burger um names come on yes that's totally fine so we already have bob belcher and linda belcher so bob and linda are just two of our active directory users and they're completely oblivious to what's going on so now let's create a couple more users let's create um where is it user louise belcher 
Now, because Louise and Linda have the same first letter, the same first character of their first name, the user logon name will be L. Belcher, which is a conflict because you have the same username referencing two different users. So in what we could do is we could add a little digit. So L2 Belcher at my office. And we'll give it a password. Pass one, two, three. Pass one, two, three with a little exclamation point. And we don't really care about um, the user changing a password. Now we're going to come into the properties and we're going to go to the member of app. Now we want to keep domain users as our primary member of group, but we also want to add a marketing dash DL group membership. Meaning that now um, Linda Belcher, or sorry, Louise Belcher is going to be part of the marketing department. Go ahead and click on apply. You have now added Louise Belcher to the marketing DL group. Now, yesterday, HR called and they've hired another user or another individual, but that individual is now going to be a supervisor. Maybe um, a section supervisor. Let's see how Tina Belcher is going to fit in to our tree. Pass one to three exclamation point. Pass one to three exclamation point. We'll remove the change password at next level. So the beauty with nested groups is that the higher up in the hierarchy that the user is located, the more control they have over a group. Please allow me to explain. <clears throat> we have, we still have the global and universal groups. So if we add Tina Belcher to the marketing dash G group, she will not necessarily have access to the marketing dash U group. So let's go ahead and add her to G. Member of add and check name. We are now adding Tina Belcher to the marketing dot global group. But HR called again. Now they have added another regional supervisor. A regional supervisor is one step above the departmental supervisor. So let's go ahead and create Gene Belcher on account. But because Gene is a regional supervisor, he needs to manage the departmental supervisor. So we're going to go ahead and make Gene a member of the universal group. Marketing dash you. Now, how can we test this theory? Well, realistically speaking, we cannot test it directly. It's a matter of, it's all a matter of how the hierarchical tree sees the, um, the ladder of permission. Please allow me to visualize this for you. We're going to go to draw.io and we're going to make a quick flowchart just so that you guys can get a quick visual. Um, organizational chart sounds about right. So this is actually a perfect representation of what I want to show you guys. This is going to be the universal group. As you can see, our universal group contains our 
regional manager. And G is going to be our departmental supervisors. So we have Gene, we have Tina, we have Bob. They're all different departmental supervisors. So in the hierarchy, uh, Louise, or sorry, not Louise, Gene is one step higher than all of the other supervisors. Therefore, by the definition of Active Directory, Gene has certain privileges on the accounts of um, Tina, Bob, and Linda. And this all happens behind the scene. Um, sadly, I don't know how to visualize it a little better than that. This flowchart diagram is the best way that I can show you guys how um, the hierarchical privileges kind of flow down the tree. And for the last part of this project is we are going to add a two or three marketing PC. So let's go ahead and right click inside of the marketing OU and we're going to click on next. We're going to add a computer. For the name, we can add something that we can um, easily attribute to the naming convention of the computer. So let's go ahead and say marketing PC and then number one. For users and groups. Now, this is something that, again, it's a little out of the scope, but you guys are going to learn with time. This is how you dictate on what group is allowed to log into the computer. So, for example, if I say the default user or group is going to be market, if I can spell it, marketing dot um, all the deal remain local only people who are part of the marketing dash dl by default are going to be able to log in to um, the marketing pc dash marketing dash pc dash zero one and with um domain computers you can also add in uh, little different details about, say, the GNS name. So, market. This is going to, for some parts of it, it's going to be pre populated because, as you can see, it does not let me edit outside of certain boxes. So, for example, in the description, I can call it um, marketing PC of Dina Belcher. Stuff like DNS name, operating system, uh, member of, this is something that you could do. So let's go ahead and give it a, hmm, a location. So we're going to put this PC in the marketing OU and we're going to give it the marketing DL. Whoops. Location. Uh, location. And we're going to click on apply. And of course, we've made the computer object already in the marketing OU. But if we had if we had created it somewhere else, it would get transferred over to marketing OU. And in terms of creating a template of a somewhat of a complicated user, as I mentioned, it's not something that you would normally do for some for a user that has a basic uh, group or rule set inside of your domain. But just for the purpose of creating one, let's go ahead and create a template for uh, a marketing administrator. So go ahead, click on new user, marketing administrator, and in the username, market admin at my office click on next and uh, give it a complicated password such as password one 
password one. Good. And we are going to edit into its properties. We're going to give it um, domain administrator privileges. No, I think it's domain admins. Okay. We're going to remove, I don't remember if we had to remove domain users for domain admin. I'll double check that. And we're going to give it the marketing dash U group. And we're going to go ahead and select OK. If there's any additional details that you would like to add, say the marketing department administrator user and office is going to be um plus one five 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 let's one two three four it's going to be the office and then extension one two three and then for somebody who's going to be doing a administrative task for this Plus one, five, 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 five. One, two, three, four. And then click on apply. And as you can see, our different um, columns are populating with that information. And one last um, part that I want to cover uh, from uh, this basic, very, very basic and introductory video is we are going to enable the recycle bin from the um, Active Directory Administrative Center so that if you do end up making a mistake at some point, um, it can be easily recovered. Please allow me to demonstrate. Go ahead and open your Active Directory Administrative Center. It's, it's loading. It's taking its sweet time. Just as a heads up, I am still not 100% familiarized with the Active Directory um, Administrative Center utility. Um, however, I am learning it more and more um, the more I practice with it. So it's, I, I do not expect you to know it by heart anytime soon. Okay, so it's a little confusing at first but don't worry about it everything is the way it should be so you're going to be greeted by the overview page obviously you're not really going to be seeing any options just yet but for anything to become more or less visible you actually have to go into the domain that you have created so under my case it's my local domain so click on whatever your domain says that it's called and in the task pane on the right, you're going to have a couple of um, administrative tasks. You're going to have new with a flash to give you group user or computer, new or sorry, delete, search under properties, change domain controller, raise the forest functional level, raise the domain functional level. Enable the recycle bin and then new again. What you want to do is to give you that uh, mistake leeway is you want to enable the recycle bin. And it's going to give you a little bit of warning once it has been created. It cannot be um, disabled. Go ahead and click on the refresh button. What, pardon. Once you have um, done that. And if I there it is right here, deleted object. So 
let's go ahead and create an accident. Let's go ahead and delete by accident the marketing PC. Uh, contains other objects. Are you sure you want to delete? Blah, blah, blah. Yes. Oh, no. We deleted it. Oh, what? Okay. Let's. Who can I delete? Hold on. Jeez, I don't have administrative rights in my own domain. That's funny. Fine. Let's just delete Bob Belcher. I can't delete Bob Belcher. Bob Burger? And delete Bob Burger. Linda? No. Okay, hold on. Okay, let's try with the deleting again. Oh, oh no, we've created an accident. We have accidentally deleted Gene. Now, let's go ahead and recover him. How do you do that? If you remember, in our root, we just saw the deleted object. If you delete anything, this is where it's going to show up. It also gives you a record of when the user was deleted and where it was deleted from. And then what kind, of a, what kind of an account is it? If you want to restore it, you have two options. You can restore it to its original place or you can restore it somewhere different. Let's go ahead and restore Gene to his original location back in the marketing OU. And lo and behold, Gene is back in his original place. I'm sorry that this video is just a little bit longer than the usual 15 to 20 minute videos, but there was a fair amount of uh, subject that needed to be covered. And I wanted to make sure that I could speak as much as I can on the subject to give you guys as much information as I could. Thank you very much for joining me on this video. Again, please like, subscribe. Put a comment if there's something that you disagree with, something that you want to give you your opinion on, or if there's just something that you think I'm completely messing up and, you know, there's a better way of doing it. I will be more than happy to consult it and implement it, sorry, and implement it in my future videos. Please consider subscribing and potentially whitelisting the channel from your ad blocker. That way it will help me grow and develop and create more of these videos for you. Thank you again so very much for the 600 subscribers. I will see you guys in the next one.